Hello lovely people, welcome to the Geek Cabaret, I'm Penge, and we are back with some more Crossroads in campaign mode, so of course welcome back to the Tankard and Teapot, where we are gearing up for the big wedding event to take place, and we have transformed our inn over the last couple of parts from a dingy, kind of rubbish, tableless, alcoholless place into a tavern that actually looks quite good. We've got tables for people to sit at, we've got some alcohol, which I hear is quite a good thing to have in a tavern, and we've got lots of lovely things to make it look pretty there's a sort of flower arch there's some flowers just there we've got some shields on the walls and some pelts over here as well and we're able now to provide food as well so we've got all sorts of kind of cooking things going on there's a grill and there's an oven and all this kind of stuff so it's all looking very very good so the big thing now is to actually get this wedding underway so we've dodged Rockbury the smarmy Rockbury we've dodged him so uh, he's not coming by anymore to check if we're selling dodgy alcohol even though we caught us a couple of times, which is a little bit confusing. But whatever the case, he's kind of now just, you know, got off our backs a bit, which is marvellous. And we are ready to actually carry on with the wedding and carry on the story mode. So I believe we probably go to you. Um, do we have a chat with you? Like, how do we move on to the next bit? I mean, it's a good point now. I'm not entirely sure how we move on to the next bit of the story. Because we want to go and do the wedding just here. Oh, maybe we just do this. Maybe we say, yes, claim this. Prepare for the wedding is done. So maybe now... That's done. It will kick into life. Maybe we just have to wait for our uncle. We just wait for Uncle Martin to speak to us again. I'm not entirely sure. But um, yeah, is it in here possibly? Maybe we need to look in here to see if we can do anything. Um, yeah, complete it. Prepare for the wedding. Uh, right, we're all ready for the wedding. Can we carry on with the wedding now? That would be great. I just noticed that we can name our innkeeper. So is this what we look like? Oh, we look absolutely fabulous. And this is someone who's just come of age, is it? This is someone who's just turned 18? Really? Good grief, that's a very long paper round you've had. Okay, right, so my name is currently Tristan, which, I, yeah, I don't really like. I, I'm a little bit taken aback by his amazing kind of moustache-beard combo. That is quite fabulous indeed. Um, okay, yeah, let's not call ourselves Tristan, because that's just that's just not our name, is it? So we're in Keeper Penge. Come on now, let's just get this properly done. Let's get it right. So in Keeper Penge, and yeah, this is where we can see our skills as well. So we're very passionate, we're quite good at oratory, we're terrible at deception, and we're really, really not very good at intimidating people. I don't feel this appearance kind of... Of, kind of uh, fits our skill set, but never mind. Ah, there we go. We just have to sort of wait a bit for this thing to roll around again. I have noticed that Martin here is now not wearing his fancy chef's whites. He just got on his sort of regular innkeeping attire, but okay, that's fine. So he is going to say, this inn has never looked better. I think we can let the bride and the groom know that we're ready. So are we going to start the party? Absolutely. Let us get this party started. Let us begin the wedding and let's just see what the heck happens. So here come the bridal party. Here they are. So that's the bride. I assume that is the groom. Oh, this is very good. I like the way that we made them wait for us. Sure, their wedding was at a certain time and date. <laughs> if we weren't ready, then it was tough. But no, no, we've made them wait. Oh my word, there's a lot of people. Oh my goodness me, there are an awful lot of people. And are you having a little dance there? Hello, so who are you? Bride Brenda. You're even called Bride Brenda. The inn is really clean. Oh, and everyone's having a little dance. <laughs> Just a hopping from foot to foot. Oh, that's marvellous. Oh, I love the fact they're just having a little sort of dance. Um, the guests are coming. The time for preparations is over. Try your best to make every guest have as much fun as possible. And don't be afraid to talk to them. Okay, let's start this wedding already. Don't be afraid to talk to them. Well, I'm not a character in the game, am I? I don't walk around and do stuff, do I? One more thing. Remember not to change decorations during the wedding. Our benefactors might think that not everything was ready on time. Okay, no, I wouldn't do that anyway. That would be a little bit strange. I'd kind of do it in the downtime. I wouldn't interrupt somebody's wedding celebrations. <laughs> Go and, like, change the walls or anything, Martin. Uh, fine, I will uh, I will try not to mess with the decorations. Yes, absolutely. Um, ah, okay, right, we can talk to these people. Okay, right, hang on a minute. Pause time for a second, because everyone's moving around, because everyone's had a little bit to drink. Um, okay, that's the bride and groom. So the bride's there. I think that's the groom. There's a fella here in a very sort of uh, very dapper green outfit, which I do quite like. Somebody here in a <laughs> cloud of smoke. Um, some people over here. Oh, you're the bird man. You're the wine bird man. Um, I don't know who you are. And you just look a little... You look a little bit kind of sinister-y, killy, stabby. Um, I know you're one of the bird people. You've got feathers on you. You just look a little bit kind of creepy. Um, let's talk to you first. A stately woman detaches herself from a group of guests and approaches you. 
Well, netting keeper, are you the one responsible for organising my daughter's wedding? Oh, so she's the mother of the bride. Um, your daughter looks stunning, or I hope everything is to your liking. Oh, now. Now. That could be taken the wrong way, couldn't it? If we say your daughter looks stunning, she might go, yes, she is, she's very beautiful. And she might go, eyes off, <laughs> get away, you. So we could risk that. That might be a bad thing. Or I hope everything is to your liking is very much more business oriented, isn't it? It's very much sort of business focused. I hope you're having a lovely time. Um, do you know what? Let's let's go for this, shall we? Let's just have a little go, shall we? Your daughter looks stunning. That's obvious. She takes after me. Unless you mean that rag she's wearing. I tried to convince her to wear something that indicates her status, but she's stubborn. She's running around shoeless and she's happy, but it's her day so she can do whatever she wants. Okay. Oh, right. A little bit of little bit of discontent there. Um, I hope everything is to your liking. Yes, indeed. Exactly how I envisaged it. Tasteful, but fierce. Okay. I don't know if I describe it as fierce, but right you are. That's nice to hear. So you did great and deserve a little something for your troubles. Oh, this is wonderful. Your favour among the outlaws has increased. Okay, so that's these, uh, these chaps here. So what's that? 40.5% favour with outlaws now. Okay. That's quite good. I like this. It's a kind of an interesting balance between what kind of pub you want to go for. Do you want to go for a pub where the outlaws are going to go? And I kind of imagine the outlaws are going to be the rogues and the maybe the sort of Dungeons and Dragons type adventurers could meet there. That's kind of what I imagine it to be. And the travellers, so those two sort of, I imagine, are closely linked. But then you've got the nobles. You can have a very refined pub with lots of lovely wine and crystal goblets and things. Um, townsfolk, just a good old classic place where people go to drink. And then, yeah, the distressed. I imagine the distressed are just the poor. I don't really know. <laughs> or does it just mean people that are very, very concerned about things? Um, so the inn's fame has risen, so we've got a fame of four, and we've got 500 guldens, which is marvellous. Um, okay, I think we leave the sort of the, the bride party, so the bride, the groom, and then this fella here to the end. Let's talk to, let's talk to Birdman. Um, hang on, what? No, no, talk to Birdman. You, priority cleaning or about? I don't want to clean the Birdman. I want to talk to him. Um... Okay, <laughs> I can't talk to the bird man. Maybe he needs a bit of a wash. Um, you, lock. Okay, hang on. Something has gone a little bit strange here. It seems to not be focusing on the on the people. There we go. Right, you. So, bird man, a happy man in a feathered outfit greets you with a smile. Salutations, innkeeper. Renmi told me a little bit about you. The aviary is grateful for your help. And what a great party this is. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, had you like the wine? Had the Avery get its name? Renmi brought you here. Or oh, keep having fun then. Okay, so these all carry on the conversation. That just basically tells him to clear off. Um, do you know what? How did the Avery get its name? He says, knowing full well that it's got loads of birds in it. Because you're dressed in lots of bird things with feathers all over you. But okay, let's ask. Uh, how should I know? Maybe because us birdies like to walk on roofs and watch people from above. People say many different things. Okay. Um, how do you like the wine? Very much so. Renmi's idea to enter this wine business was fantastic. I'm glad we got you involved in this too. Otherwise, I probably wouldn't be here today, having all this fun. Okay, and then Renmi brought you here. One thing you must know about me, innkeeper, is that I always show up whenever there's a mention of a party. And, or, large amounts of wine. Especially if my old pal Renmi is going to be there too. Okay, so I don't know who you are, I don't know what your name is, but you just turn up for a shindig. Okay, that's <laughs> absolutely fine. Right, can we click on him now? Yes, there we go. Ah, hello, innkeeper. Long time no see. I can't help but notice our wine is serving a higher purpose. Love. Yes, indeed, my good sir. So how do you like the wine? I've met your friend. Where'd the name come from? How have you been doing? Oh, <laughs> bottoms up. I finally need to talk to him, I kind of think. Um, let's say, how have you been doing? Let's just sort of politely ask how he is. Oh, these are not good times for the aviary. Oh, okay. Why? What's going on? This is none of your business, kid. I don't care what Martin says about you. I don't trust you enough. Let's try and have a pleasant talk about something else. Oh, my relationship with him has tumbled. Oh, that's a bit of a shame. Oh, I could have tried to help out. Oh, never mind. Um, I've met your friend. Oh dear. This is going very badly indeed. Oh, I see you've met Burned. Burned? Burnt? Burned. He's a good friend, and you can rely on him. I knew he'd always show up if he heard about the wedding, and as always, he did not disappoint. And for some reason, that has weakened my relationship with him. Why has that done that? I'm basically, oh yeah, you've met somebody. Now I hate you more. Um, okay, um, how do you like the wine? 
Yeah, I'm not sure really where this is. Is there a bug here with this relationship weakening? Because that th this doesn't make any sense. So how do you like the wine? Same as always. Even uh, maybe even a little bit more. Who would have thought that this business would be so beneficial? I hate you. <laughs> what? Okay, well, I'm going to ask where the name Aviary came from. I imagine he's going to hate me for that as well. Um, uh, oh no, he didn't hate me for that. The name of our organisation comes from the dim and distant past when we would meet up high on the rooftops of Yorvale's capital city and scout for potential victims. Nowadays, we still do that, but as you already know, we're also no strangers to more grounded and ground-level jobs. So Yorvale's capital city. I feel like I need to ask all the questions. Yorvale's capital is the city of Ore. That's where the headquarters of the aviary are. You're not very good at basic geography, are you? Um, no, I'm not. It's almost like I don't know the world I live in very well. And you just tell anyone where your secret headquarters are located... I told you, innkeeper, this is none of your business. I'm out of here. Okay, that was a terrible conversation with him. He now really, really probably doesn't like us at all. Okay, whatever. Um, okay, so we spoke to the two aviary people. We've spoken to the mother of the bride. Let's talk to this chap in green. He's intriguing. Suddenly, a smartly dressed, albeit rather drunk man, bumps into you. It takes you a moment to recognise your benefactor, the groom's father. Ah, so we've seen the mother of the bride... This is now the father of the groom. Okay, so <laughs> he's a little bit drunk. Well done. Hello, innkeeper. Are you the one responsible for this party? Uh, what a classy outfit. What do you think about your son's beloved? Or how do you like the wedding? I'm going to compliment his outfit. Because that's a good thing to do. I'm not used to parading around in such costly clothes. But Brian's mum gifted him to me. I, I mean, Len. Just for this occasion. So, okay, I'll ask. What do you think about your son's beloved? Such a nice girl, very kind. Her mother scares me a little, though. Yeah, me too, mate. <laughs> How'd you like the wedding? Don't even try to joke. Why are these abominations hanging on the walls? This was supposed to be a decent country wedding. Where are the colourful festoons? Where are the flower bouquets? They're outside. Did you not see them? I put a flower archway and a little barrel with flowers outside. That's what I put in. Oh, well, never mind. Yeah, so he doesn't like it so much. I'm sorry to hear that. Oh, dear. I have nothing else to say. Farewell. Right, so he's a little bit drunk. Okay, and oh no. So our favour among the distressed has gone down. <laughs> okay, fine. This is not going very well at all, is it? Um. Uh, okay, right. Let's talk to the groom then. A young man, more or less your age, approaches you and smiles. Hello, innkeeper. I just wanted to quickly thank you on behalf of me and my beloved new wife. You did great. I like him. I like him. He's full of enthusiasm, just like myself. At first glance, I could have sworn that a nobleman was getting married at my inn. Son of a miller and the daughter of an outlaw. How did this happen or best of luck? Oh no, I'm going to compliment the, with the top one. I'm going to call him a nobleman. Well, my new mother-in-law insisted on this outfit. I agreed immediately despite her daughter's protest. Truth is, my lovely mother-in-law scares me a little bit. Either way, I think that overall my betrothed likes me in this attire, regardless of what she's saying. Okay, so then I'm going to say, yeah, how did this happen? Because it seems an unusual kind of mix, because a daughter of an outlaw, son of a miller. Um, one day, while walking through the forest, I was ambushed and kidnapped by a gang. In their camp, they realised that I have nothing valuable on me. So everyone lost interest, except for one person, from whom it was me who had something, who had stolen something. I don't get it. What did you steal from her? What? Her heart. I thought it was obvious. <laughs> Not really. You need to spell these things out to me a bit. What's your opinion on the outlaws? Very resourceful people and not as nasty as one would expect. Especially one of them is quite pleasant to look at. Okay, right you are. Um, best of luck in your new life. Uh, and now the last one. So we'll have a chat with the bride who looks a little bit like she... Oh no, it's the angle. It's the angle. Are they doing some dancing then? Yes. Oh, oh, the, the bird guy is doing some twiddly twirling around. Oh, look at this. It's some very good dancing. Okay, well, let's talk to the bride then. While walking around the inn, you accidentally bump into the bride. Uh, okay, so that's her. So you're the one our parents paid to organise today's event. I must confess that, regardless of what my mother thinks, this is the happiest day of my life. Oh, I'm, I'm touched. How do you like the wedding? Beautiful dress. Yeah, I'm going to say beautiful dress, just to annoy your mum. You think so? That's so nice. My mother was insisting that I wear a fancy dress. Looted, of course, during a robbery. Ah, that's why you don't want to wear it, because you've got these principles. You want to wear someone else's dress that has been robbed of them. But I wanted a true country folk wedding, so this is the dress I chose. My paramour wasn't so fortunate. Indeed, yes, I have heard. So how do you like the wedding? Everything's perfectly organised, if you ask me. Okay, marvellous. What do you like the most? The contents of the menu. 
I was just wondering if I should order another dish or maybe some more alcohol. I better do both. <laughs> yes, absolutely. And we know your paramour wasn't so fortunate. Um, we'll mention it anyway, just for the sake of it. Um, despite my protest, my mother forced him to wear a very fancy coat she got God knows where. But I must admit, he does look very dignified in it. Okay, so end the conversation. I believe we've spoken to everybody. I think we've spoken to all the people. Uh, we've probably just completed a quest thingamajig. Talk to the wedding guest is complete. Okay, you don't have the proper equipment to store some of the resources. Oh, hang on a minute. Is this thing full? Is that... Oh, hang on a minute. Oh, no, I thought we got rid of Rockbury. Rockbury's coming in to cause trouble. Boo, it's not the pantomime villain. Boo. Okay, right, so he's just sort of in here, sort of staring around the place. What do you want, you terrible man? You, you think I don't know what you did? You'll pay for this. For everything. What in the heavens are you talking about, Rockbury? You've imported all that wine from Sambria and destroyed my business. Die in flames, you worms. What? What? Are you going to set fire to my beautiful tavern? You'd better not do. Rockbury, no. <gasps> he set fire to my tavern? You insufferable, horrible man. Oh my goodness me, and people can't... <laughs> this is a window. This is not a door. <laughs> Very went mad. When Martin got to me, it was already too late. A torch he'd tossed landed on the roof. The building went up in flames in an instant. Then, during the struggle, Martin's bandage slid off of his arm, revealing a tattoo. A tattoo that would lead up to a series of unexpected events. Meanwhile, the fire that was consuming the inn spread onto the nearby buildings and the vineyard that belonged to Rockbury himself. Terrified, the Duke stood and watched the aftermath of his actions. His senseless revenge was devouring his family's estate right before his eyes. It was the end of him. But it was also the end of the simple life Martin and his nephew had been living on the land belonging to the Duke. Old innkeeper knew that if they were to be safe, they needed to find a new home. Well, what an idiot. So he's burnt down our tavern. Hang on, pause for a second. He burnt down our tavern, but he's also burnt down his own kind of vineyards, which is where he made all his money and his fame and his wealth. Well, that didn't work very well, did it? So yeah, look, our tavern's gone. <laughs> our tavern's gone. And the fire has even consumed the outside toilet. Oh, it's a terrible, terrible day. So everything is gone. Everything has gone. Oh, there's a little barrel just there. There's one barrel. What's in there? There's some wine. There's nothing left to do, Martin. <laughs> Let's just sit down here and drink all the wine and <laughs> just get trolleyed. I know, so we've got some wine. Oh, some mugs. What's in here? And some plates. Oh, there we go. Some wine, some mugs, and some plates. We can just get drunk. We can we can drink wine from both mugs and off a plate, if we so wish. Oh, no. So we spent all that time building that up, and then the idiot Rockbury came in and, A, burnt our tavern down, and ruined a wedding as well. What an idiot. Okay, fine, right. What happens now then, Martin? And what is this mysterious tattoo that is on your arm? Now, I did notice this before he had this bandage on, but I assumed... That he's just because he's got these sort of cuts on his on his sort of uh, knuckles there. I assume that he was just injured. I assume he just hurt himself doing some tavern business, and that's what that was. But no, that's hiding, that's hiding something else. Okay, right. So what's he on about? Wait a moment. Western outskirts of Crossroads by the old oak tree. This must be the place. That jolly naughty merchant said there'd be a house here. We've been scammed, boy. Oh, okay, so we've... Okay, the story's moved on a little bit without telling us what's happened. So we must have gone to look for a house, and there is no house here. Okay, right, so obviously we've been turfed out of the lands we were in, and now we're going to go and look for a house which is not here. Okay, so we can um, either say relax. Why did we come here? Uh, hang on a minute, this isn't bringing up the little rollovers that I would be expecting. Where are the little rollovers telling me the chance of success? Um, so relax, we'll figure something out. The important thing is we've managed to escape with our lives thanks to you. Why did we come here? Rockbury's ruined, he hardly has anything left, let alone any means of hurting us. Um, this one is like mean, so basically him saying you're reckless and why did we run away? And we could always back and stick this Lando so, so far up his. Um, I didn't go for the top one. 
relax. We'll figure something out. Let's just keep cool, keep rational. The important thing is we've managed to escape with our lives. Thanks to you. Okay, success or a tree. That's good. You're right. And thank you. I know that someday we'll pull through. We always do. And, and we're going to build a new inn right here. Okay, so for some reason our favour among the distressed decrease. I'm not entirely sure why that would be the case, but there we go. So now look, all our levels have reset themselves. Everything has kind of reset itself. So we've gone down to, that's 50%. We've got 15 with the, with, uh, what are they, the townsfolk. 5% with the nobles. 15% with the outlaws. And 15% with the travellers. Ah, oh, so we did all that stuff and it's just all gone. Oh, that's a shame. A new inn. Yes, a new inn. Bigger. Finer. Finest in all the land, in fact. Yeah, we've got no money, Martin. We've got zero coins. We've got not even one. We've got not a, not a tiny, tiny coin between us. Uh, okay, so go on then. Tell me your amazing plan. Well, it's nice to dream and all, but without money, dreaming is just about all we can do. Or I don't think we're going to find another miller happy to pay us in advance for his, for his son's wedding. Um, Let's go for the top one. Without money, dreaming is about all we can do. Not to worry, boy. We'll take a loan. Okay, so a loan, I guess I could work. All right, sounds like a plan. Or, or um, that's definitely not going to get us into even more trouble. No, no, it sounds like a plan. A loan is always good. I'm really good when we play games with loans. I always manage to pay them back. Maybe sometimes. Um, yeah, okay, it sounds like a plan. I mark it on your map, the Colossus Bank. Go there and get us some money. Okay, we'll end the conversation right there. So take a loan from the bank. Okay. The reward is your inn's fame rises. That there isn't an inn. <laughs> Have you heard about the inn that doesn't exist? There we go. Uh, we're going to call the new one the Tankard and Teapot, obviously. Um, oh, hang on a minute. Whoa, 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 game. Hang on a moment. You can't just resettle our skills. We were very passionate. We'd worked that up to eight. An oratory was three, I think. Maybe wisdom had gone up as well. I think these two were quite terrible. Why is it reset us? As the, as the fire that, that was wiped our brain as well. That's a bit weird. Oh, I'm a little bit miffed about that. Okay, fine. Right, okay, it's marked on the map. Um, uh, the nearest bank. Oh my goodness me. The lo the loan of your veil. Okay, right, so it's in the middle of nowhere. So, uh, do we just do that? As an initiative of the Ore Magnates, this bank mainly finances the production of food. However, its secondary goal is to support all of the business entities of Yorvale. Okay, so this is... Ah, no, we can actually go and have a proper look at the world map now. Because I think before we'd been zoomed in onto this little area of Yorvale. But yeah, look, there's loads going on. It's a big old space. So a cold bit up there. You've got the cold, the frozen north. Um, some sort of mountainy ranges. Like a nice lake here. Huge kind of lake there. And then this bit here, and then Sambria down the bottom here. I imagine as we sort of explore these things, we will find more sort of markers and things. So there's the National Bank of Sambria. Can we find the National Bank? Oh, there you go. Look, the Untermarchian Banks. We know where all the banks are now. <laughs> go and get a loan from each. Um, okay, I guess that means we go and talk to them. So select wanted amount. I don't know how much we need. How much do we need to take our loan? Um, I don't know. Uh, we probably need at least... 10 grand, I would have thought. At least 10 grand to build something decent with lots of things. So 10 grand, your debt is 11 grand. Return in 20 days. That's not that bad. Hang on, what if we just slap it up to that? If we take out 20 grand, we need, ah, but we will need to pay back 22 grand in 20 days. Yeah, that seems, actually, that's a bit bonkers. Let's bring that down. 10 grand should allow us to build quite a big, quite a big, big in. Although thinking about it, 10 grand. Hang on, is there anything telling me how much to take out? Take a loan. Take as much as you can. Ah, there you go then. Right, so Martin has marked the map. Okay, on the map where the bank is. Go there and take a loan. Take as much as you can. The in has to be great. Now yeah, just thinking about that. Oh, back to the map. Hang on. Uh, go to there. Um, Each square, I believe, if we go and check quickly actually, go to here. Uh, pause time for a sec. Uh, if we go to here, and look how to build, look, every tile that we build one square is 500 monies. So if we built a thing that was, that was, I don't know, three by three, that's, uh, well, that's 1,000, 2,000, 4,000, 4,500 would build a three by three grid. That's 4,500 monies. 
And then we'd already be almost halfway through the 10 grand money that we'd borrowed. So yeah, we need to go and borrow every single scrap of money we can because that, yeah, we're not going to get much out of this. Like that there, 10,000, uh, no, 1,000, sorry. That builds two squares of tavern, <laughs> nothing else in it. So yeah, do you know what? We'll have that, please. Thank you very much. What could possibly go wrong with taking out a massive loan from a potentially dodgy bank? Um, Okay, pay your bank debt. Taking a loan from a bank feels good. No, it doesn't. It feels terrifying because the bank have probably got big angry people who want to come and break my toes. Um, you might have to remember to repay it. Um, otherwise, the bank uh, might take over your in. Yes, indeed. I understand how kind of loans and things work. Okay, right. So we've got that. I kind of feel like we should build the in first before I claim this. I feel like we should have something in place before I try and make the fame rise. So, okay. Right, Martin. Carry on the story. Uh, well, they say that money doesn't bring happiness, but I sure feel better having it. It's not really ours, though, is it, Martin? We need to pay it back to some people. Uh, okay, fine. Uh, let's get to work, my boy. It's time to build the soon-to-be-famous Crossroads Inn. Okay. Can we not call it the tankard and teapot, then? You want to call it the Crossroads Inn? Okay. I'm on it. Any suggestions where to start? Bah, you already know all you need to build a fine inn, my boy. And uh, you can always also consult the innkeeper's journal. End conversation. Okay, is it now just build a thing? Oh my goodness me, it is literally just build a thing. <gasps> oh, right. So using your knowledge from the tutorial, build a fully functional inn. Hire staff, furnish the place, create a menu and obtain the first resources. Oh my gosh. Okay, right. So it's now gone into kind of almost sandbox mode. We've got a tiny little bit of wine over there, which is fine, and some plates and some mugs. And that is it. Okay, right. Well, here we go. Let's build us an inn then. Now, what I'm thinking is this path kind of goes at the middle here. Can we build on top of the path? We can, but I'm wondering whether we need to build. I quite like the idea of having a a bit going like round there. That's the only space we've got. But I'm thinking at some point, we want to want to get guest rooms in. And I like the idea of having the guest rooms separate from the main bit of the tavern. So there can be the drinky, eaty bit of here. So we could have a drinky bit here where you can go and have some lovely, lovely wine or beer or whatever. And then maybe a kitchen over here and then a storeroom. Also, I'm putting the storeroom on the ground floor because it was a pain having the storeroom up in the up in the second floor, the first floor, sorry, because um, it took so long for people to get there. So we're putting the storeroom on the ground, I think. So um, I quite like the idea of having this, the drinking bit here and then having this is where the guest rooms could be because that makes quite a lot of sense to me to separate it uh, over so you know, have it in two distinct areas. And so we're going to need a main hall first. So how about... Um, yeah, we'll build a bit here. So we'll do that there, and then we'll build that to there. Okay, right. Hang on. It said it was 300. That says 500. This is very confusing. That says 500. Cost 500. I'll build that there. Minus 300. <laughs> what? Somebody explain this madness. Um, okay, so we'll build... I think we'll build it out here as near to the edge as we can. So we'll do that... Uh, it's not very big, though, is it? So if we pop a bit across there. So I want the door to be just here. So do we have to... Where's... How do we build doors? Ah! Oh, there's so many lovely doors. Oh, yes. Hang on. Can we look at the fancy doors? That looks quite fancy. Um, blue. Oh, hang on. Yeah, there. Like a sort of a blue... Yeah, it's got a blue frame on it. I quite like that. So that can be the main drinking bit. We'll put the... Bar over there, possibly. Right, hang on. Now go back to here. So what we're going to do is we're going to try and plan ahead. So I want there to be a kitchen because it was a bit weird having the oven and stuff outside. Although I don't know, actually. Can we build the oven and such inside? Yes, we can. We can put the grill inside and we can put whatever that thing was, a cauldron inside. I'd like there to be a kitchen. So we're going to put those inside. So we're going to have a little kitchen area and a stove as well. Look, So we want a kitchen. I assume we can expand our our sort of borders at some point. Maybe that's when we unlock. Because there's all this room around the edge. There's all this space over here that we could be using that we're not. So yeah, that'd be quite handy. So um, yeah, maybe we put so the kitchen down here. So it doesn't need to be that big, the kitchen. And we expand the drinking bit up a bit. 
So an extra eight squares might be quite expensive. So extra eight squares of main hall. And then we could have the kitchen here, maybe a little storage area, sort of over here possibly. Something at the back. What other rooms are there? So an empty room, not really so bothered about that. So the main hall, yeah, kitchen, the backbone of your inn, that's where the staff prepare the food. So yeah, we could have a little kitchen along here. Storage, maybe at the back there. A staff room. Staff room could be very useful. I don't know how big they need to be, but that'd be good. Guest rooms could be good. Or do we put the guest rooms upstairs? Do we have the guest rooms upstairs and have a second floor? Oh, that might be quite good. Yes, maybe we do that. But then we don't need this to be an entire massive drinking area, do we? Maybe that's what we need to work on. Maybe we need to work on it. But right now, I think, oh no, I've done, oh, it's gone into a different room. No, undo, <laughs> make that the same. Um, right, hang on a minute. Sell, sell that, sell that. Go back to here, click in here, expand that room, please. There we go. I think we got the money back. So I don't think we lost out on anything there. So that's okay. So um, we'll expand it like that, look. So we've got a fairly nice area to do some drinking in. And then, yeah, let's put the kitchen here. Let's put the kitchen down the side. And then if we have the storeroom here, they can sort of move between them quite quickly. So we'll have a kitchen going like that, I think. Like so. Then we're going to need a door. Oh, we could put windows in as well. Oh, we need to do the walls. Oh, this is very exciting. Also, I'm a little bit worried that we've burned through half our cash and all we've got is an empty room, <laughs> but okay. Um, so the door to the kitchen can be something fairly ordinary, I would have thought. Or can we just have an archway or something? Or do we have to have a door? It looks like we may be forced to have a door. Um, do you know what that'll do? Let's just pop the door to the kitchen there. So that can be the kitchen. And we'll put some stuff in there. But right now, let's get the basics in then. So we need some tables. We need some chairs. We need some lights. We need all the kind of basic stuff. So, okay. So, uh, chandelier type candle things. Uh, one there and one there. And then one down here. Or do we put one there and one there? Let's put one there and let's put one there. I want it to be well lit. I don't want people to think it's dingy and terrible. So there we go. 8,200 remaining. <laughs> oh, dearie me. A simple counter... A nice counter is 800. An elegant desk. Ooh, okay. Fancy desks. Um, okay, right. So this is where the beer purchasing is going to happen for people. So where do you want to put this? If the storeroom is going to be here, it might make sense to have it round this way. So if we put it, say, here. Oh, but that means I have to... Can we swap the side that that's on? I want to kind of swap where the long side is. Um... How about we have it like that then? So we have that just uh, there. So we've got a nice counter, which is marvellous. And then we just need to get a few of these in. And we can't go too overboard with these right now because we're not going to have any money left. <laughs> so let's put that one. Um, can we put it right there? Can we actually do that? Is that going to let people sit at the thing? Can people fit into that gap? Yes, I assume people can indeed fit into that gap. Okay, marvellous. Right, so drop that to there. So we've got one table. Um, I think we might possibly need to get some more tables. Uh, let's get a table there with the requisite benches on it. Yay. Um, can we afford to get another table? Possibly. Maybe if we put one. Uh, how about one against that wall? Like that. And one there. And then we'll see if we can fit some in the middle at some other point. But right now, I think we need to conserve monies. So one there and one there. Okay, right. Marvellous. 5,640 remaining. Okay, now what's the book saying? So build the inn. So seats next to tables, a shelf and at least two barrels. Yes, of course, we need some storage. In please, alcohol, an outhouse. Of course, we need to build a little outhouse for people to go and relieve themselves. Um, where is the outhouse? I assume it's in here somewhere. There. Okay, right. Build an outhouse. Oh, it has to go on our territory, does it? It can't go on... Oh, that's slightly annoying, isn't it? Well, I don't want it to be out the front. I don't want people to, <laughs> to sort of go, I'm going to go to the loo. Oh, it's right out the front. The first thing they see when they come around the corner is a toilet. Um, so, no, let's not put it there. Maybe we just need to put it here, look. We'll drop it there. We'll put a door just there. It'll be fine. So we'll go like that. 
So there's the there's the loo. Uh, we then need a door, <laughs> which is quite useful. Um, let's have a nice door. I think all the doors cost the same. Let's have a nice... Do you know what? Let's keep it themed, actually. Let's have that there. So that's going outside. So outside doors can be that one. Inside doors can be that one. That'll do. So we'll have a door that leads to the toilet. Very important. Um, we are going to want to build a very small storage room, I think. But it can be teeny tiny at the moment. Do you know what? For the moment, it can just be like that. There we go. So a tiny storage room. And then that's the interior door. So that can go there. So we've got a storage room. And then we want to get a barrel. I think he's there. Simple barrel. Yep, that'll do. So let's pop a simple barrel just there and one next to it. And then a storage shelf is also required. If I can figure out what one of those is. A basic shelf. Yep, that'll do. So pop that in the corner. Marvellous. Um, and then also maybe out here, out the back, near near the toilet. This is the obvious place to uh, to put your pallet. And you know what, everyone? Look, the pallet's on the ground. <laughs> because, because that's how pallets work. I've learned that you can't build pallets that float in the sky because that's just a nonsense. So we'll put a pallet down as well. Okay, this is good. Oh, there's a little fence and everything. It's marvellous. Um, okay, what's that? A rat trap. Oh, okay. So it, uh, a trait. It's ugly. Okay, fine. Yes, of course. Okay, that's that done. So what else is it saying? I've got all these things. So in please, alcohol to the menu. So we need to obtain some alcohol. So we have something to drink. We need to hire some employees. And then it looks okay. I mean, yes, obviously right now it's a, it's a big old mess. It's a, well, we've put the furniture in, but we've not got anything built yet, which is a little bit weird. <laughs> okay. Um, right. Yes. Okay. Let's move time on. Let's see how long it takes them to build this. And I would quite like, you know, would quite like. Hang on. Pause, 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 pause again. Uh, this area here, if we say we want to build that, there's a little bit around here by the front door. I quite like the idea of having this as, as like, a, I don't know, an area where there is nice stuff. So we'll build there and we'll build there and down there and down there. But here and here, we could put some nice outside garden-y type things. Oh, we need some windows, don't we? We need some windows in. Oh, look at that. Are they geek cupboard colored windows? Are they yellow and blue? Yes, absolutely. We're having so. Oh, yes, indeed. We're having geek cupboard windows, everybody. So um, let's not many windows out the back because that's a bit weird because that means you can see who's going to the toilet and that's just all sorts of odd. We'll put some windows here, though. I don't know kind of what good the windows do, but they're 50 each. So, yeah, it's, it's not, not too much of a bother. It makes it look quite nice, I suppose. So, um... Yeah, there we go. Joe, we'll just put windows all across the front because it looks pretty. Uh, and we'll put a window there and maybe we'll put something nice on that wall if we can get to it. Also, we need to pick what we want the outsides to look like. The only thing I'm thinking is maybe we need to do that at a later point because otherwise I will have no money left. <laughs> And um, and um, and yeah, we'll, we won't be able to do anything else. We'll have no staff or whatever. Okay, right. Let's hire some people. We've got Martin. So Martin, you are going to you know can do less gossiping, less kitchen work, less cleaning. You can do a bit less carrying. You can do waiting tables and innkeeping. What does innkeeping consist of? Preparing drinks and snacks. Okay, yes, and you can wait the tables. So you can prepare the stuff and go and wait the tables. That is good. Right, now we want to get another person in. Oh, my word, there's many things. That's a thug. Oh, okay, there's new... Oh, and a workman and a housekeeper. Okay, we don't need housekeepers uh, because, obviously, yes, we haven't got any rooms for people yet. So that person will go round and tidy everything up, I assume. So if we have a housekeeper, they will go in and tidy up the rooms and make the beds and clean them and all that kind of stuff. Uh, we need some servants to begin with. So... Sharazad, okay, so Sharazad um, is persuasive and speedy. Okay, I mean, I'm sold already. We'll have you, thank you very much. Uh, we'll have a drudge as well, just someone who can just lug some stuff around. Eduardo, Bertram, or Bahadur. Um, what's wrong with you? You're a coward, you're gloomy, but you're persuasive. Okay, an interesting mix of things. You are lazy. Lazy but tough. Okay, that could be quite good for a drudge. You have many things. So you're cheerful. You're a gossiper. You're a smoker. And you're speedy. I think we might go for you, Eduardo. And you have a fine bit of facial fuzz. So, um, yeah, okay. We'll pick you, Eduardo. So you can come in as well. So we might need another servant. Thinking about it. 
because we've got one person who can, I don't know, do the tables and stuff to help Martin. We need somebody else to just go do cleaning because that was quite useful last time. Um, Lamis, you're brave, you're lawful, but you're a bit lazy. Okay, fine. And Tonina, you're lawful, you're a slacker, marvellous, and you're speedy. So you're a lawful quick slacker. We'll have you, absolutely. We'll hire you. And now let's go into our list of people. So, um, yeah, you. Who was the... Ah, yeah, so you here, you can be the one that's going to focus on the cleaning. You can do cleaning. You're not going to wait tables. Or you can do minimal room services. We're not doing any of that. Minimal gossiping and no innkeeping. Your primary job really is to clean. Go forth and clean things. And you, if we go to your priorities, um, you can do some low-level cleaning, but really I want you to doing uh, waiting tables and innkeeping. Uh, minimal gossip, no room service. In fact, you know what? No cleaning as well. The other person can do some cleaning. Is Martin set to do a little bit of cleaning? Uh, yes, he is if it comes to it. Okay. Um, and then um, big kind of uh, grunt guy, what are you going to do? Um, carrying, yes, move stuff around. Carpentry is fixing things, isn't it? Not so bothered about that. Farming, plants and animals, none of that. Cleaning, yeah, low. Manual work is cleaning the debris. Yeah, we'll leave you as there. And kitchen work can be no, because that's helping in the kitchen. We don't want you to do any of that. Um, okay, Joe, we'll put cleaning off on you. You can just move stuff around. So we've got staff done. So that's another thing that we'll tick off on our list. So that's another thing done. So we've got all these things. Right, alcohol. We need to obtain some alcohol and add it to the menu. Okay, well, I think we might need to go all the way down to... Where's the bandit camp? Um, where is the bandit camp? It's gone. Okay, I thought there was a bandit camp somewhere. Maybe we don't need the bandit camp anymore. Because we can just buy the wine from like everywhere else now because Rockbury's thing is burnt down because yeah Rockbury's mansion look it's all sort of charred and burnt because he set fire to because he's an idiot um so this is where we are is it well let's go and have a look in here and see if they have any wine for us to buy um uh, they've got lager oh they've actually got lager <laughs> got some lager um okay let's get ourselves at least three wine and at least three lager that's going to cost 766 monies. It's quite expensive. <laughs> it's expensive. Um, and um, yes, again, people in the comments as well pointed out last time that um, there's a transport cost for this. So there's a transport fee of 100. So you want to order as much as you can, really, in one shipment. I think that'll do for now. That will do for now. So, okay, we've got some wine and some lager to be on its way to us. Now we need somewhere to actually have the stuff. So what's that? A wine barrel. Where do we serve lager out of? Stacks of barrels. Uh, like, yeah, how do we serve lager? Not entirely sure. There's a mirror, a night potty. That's nice. So a wine barrel. I understand that. That's absolutely fine. People can go and grab a, grab a nice wine from the wine barrel. Um, let's put the wine barrel just there, actually. Let's pop it just there. How do people have lager? Is that something that I'm missing that's really obvious, which is very, very likely? Or or is it not as obvious as it possibly should be? Okay, I'm not quite sure how we serve the lager. Maybe we need another barrel, but I did just check the barrel and you can choose to store different things in it. You can choose water or fish or whatever. But when you choose alcohol, it's just a generic kind of alcohol storage barrel. You don't get to pick lager or wine or whatever. Uh, we do need to add some of these, however. So uh, we will add lager to the menu and we will add wine to the menu as well, because why the heck not? So we'll add two of those things to the menu. So I think in terms of actually what the journal wants us to do to build the inn, um, we need to obtain the alcohol and we need to get, well, the alcohol will be added onto the menu. That'll tick itself off momentarily, I would have thought, I think. Uh, did it do it? Yeah, there we go. So we need to obtain the alcohol, so it needs to be delivered to our place. Again, it's still not built yet. <laughs> the place doesn't exist at the moment. So we might need to move time on a little bit. I mean, there's people coming in to clean. Yeah, you might be in for a little bit of a tricky time if you're going to keep cleaning this place. <laughs> it's a little bit dirty right now. Oh no, there you go. It's magically appeared. Now, I know we have no lights in here. We've got no lights in these two rooms. It's fine. We'll sort that out when we actually have some money. But there we go. So there is a little bit of muck around. 
because the building has just been completed. But I think everybody is getting on with stuff quite nicely. So yeah, we just need the um, we need the alcohol to arrive. Oh no, it has arrived. The alcohol has arrived. So that's the drudge look. The drudge is going out and picking up the things. So he's picking up. He's already picked up the plates, I think. So he's now picked up the um, the barrel of whatever that was. That was wine, wasn't it? Uh, there's there's my uncle. He's going to pick up the plates. Okay, so this is good. This is all looking fabulous. And now the last thing is uh, obtain alcohol. Right, well, we're hopefully going to sort that. Unlock a new social group in the innkeeper's journal. So, oh, we've got 10, up, 10 upgrades. Get the heck out of town. Okay, uh, well, it seems to be wanting me to unlock the traveler's type. So we'll do that. That's nine. Guests will start leaving tips. Absolutely, we want that. Thank you very much. Now, why can't we have townsfolk or nobles? I do not know. Increases the max amount of goods that can be ordered by five. Unlocks more storage objects. What's that up there? Unlocks a tool shelf to speed up and raise the quality of tasks performed. Yeah, I can't see what those are at the minute. I can't zoom. Oh my goodness. <gasps> Look at all the gazillion of upgrades that there are. Oh, there's loads of them. You have to zoom out to see them all. Oh my word. Crikeys. Okay. Um. Right. There are many, many things. Oh, wow. Right, I'm I'm completely thrown. A dormitory might be quite a good idea. Let's get that thing, and let's get a dormitory in at some point. Okay, now what are these? The number of workers looking for jobs. Guests are more patient. It unlocks carrots in the garden. We can grow our own carrots. Oh, this is brilliant. Um, guests are more patient. That's going to be very, very useful. <laughs> That's going to be very handy. Um, and... I think we might go for this. So let's get this. Unlocks more storage objects. That's interesting. Increases the amount of money people are willing to pay for food and drinks. That sounds promising as well, doesn't it? Maybe we'll just do that for now. So I think... I think we should have completed this now. Obtain alcohol. Ah, right. We haven't put it in the barrel yet. Is that what that means? There we go. Right, so the alcohol goes into the barrel. Well, this will do for now. Let's open our new inn. Okay, end conversation. And we're open. We are open for business. And here comes a lady, an adventure type lady. She's got, I don't know what that is on a bag, a kite or something. I don't know. And here come our first guests. Judging by their attire, they're travellers. Old Martin knows the life on the road, my boy. Hmm, since our new inn lies right next to where so many trail routes cross, it might be a good unprofitable idea to build a guest room for all those weary travellers. Okay, right, well tell me about the travellers. What's there to tell? They travel, but that much you've probably figured out by yourself. But they're often willing to pay good money for a warm bed and that's why they're interesting to us. Okay, right, guest room, I am on it. Not so fast. We need to raise the fame of our inn so that people view staying here for the night as a fine idea. Oh dearie me. <laughs> Remember that you can always hire a town crier in Crossroads to advertise our services. So we can raise the fame. That's our fame just there. So 10 there. And hire a town crier. So we can have a town crier. <laughs> Camera going, oh yay, oh yay, go to the tankard and teapot. Although I think we might now be called the Crossroads in permanently. I'm not entirely sure. Um, okay, raise the fame. How do we do that? Uh, the more people enjoy visiting our inn, the more famous we become. Indeed, yes. If you are a good inn, it will get around. Word will spread sort of thing. To that end, it sometimes may even be smart to lower the prices and make sure that everyone in the inn is working working at their top speed. Many patrons will also appreciate a richly looking, well-lit decor. Ah, it's well lit. I did that earlier, but not all. Distressed will not enjoy luxurious ornaments and furniture, while outlaws prefer to drink their, drink their drinks in the dark. Okay, right. Um, I kind of I kind of feel like I want to go down the sort of the travellers, the travellers and the normal folk kind of route. I don't really want the outlaws in here. I'm not so bothered. Because they're like troublemakers and stuff. I'd rather have the travellers and the, the normal people in here as a nice place. Okay, right. Hire a town crier. Basically, a signboard for your business. But load and walking around. If you pay enough, they will yell in a public square. Whatever you want. Be it news or advertisements. Okay, right. Let us do this. So you're going to come in. Um, we do have a thing here. So we can claim this. So the uh, fame is going to rise if we claim that. So that's going to bump it from 10 to 12. And now we can claim this one that was from taking a loan from the bank. 
So our in's fame is going to go to 13. Okay, so we got an extra three there. So now our current goals are pay your bank debt. Yeah, we do need to start making some money very, very soon. Provide lodging for a night. So hire a town crier and raise your in's fame. That's not really providing lodging, is it? That's hiring someone to yell about us and then making our fame go higher, which I think we have just done, technically. Um, and, um, yeah, I guess we've got to build ourselves a little guest room or whatever, uh, which is fine. There you go. That thing is just ticked off, I think, by raising the fame. So I think what we'll do now is we'll pause it. We shall finish up for now. But, look, we've already got people coming in. We've got two people coming in already. Is there anyone else coming down the path? No, but it's okay. These two people are going to have the you know, the honour and the privilege of being the first two into our new shiny tavern, which is very, very exciting. It's all very brightly lit. It looks very lovely. No decor at the minute. We'll try and get some decor in when we've actually got a little bit of money coming in. Because at the moment, we're quite poor. We've got to pay wages and buy stock and what have you. So, um, so yeah, when we've got some money coming in, we'll actually uh, put some, some, you know, pretty things around the place. But, um, yeah, I think what we'll do is, now it's all open, it's ready, it's built. We'll finish up for now. I think we'll finish up. It's a good spot to leave it. We've got a place that's constructed. The old one's burnt down. That is now, you know, a, a terrible memory. It's long gone. So this is the new place. And we'll have to deal with this from now onwards, I guess. I guess this is now where we're going to carry on. And um, yes, we're going to get guest rooms in next time, if we can. If it all does not go horribly, horribly wrong and we end up bankrupt. Because once again, I've built far too big a place. And we've got a room here that's not even in use yet. Do we even need this kitchen in? Maybe if we get a little bit tight on cash, we could just sell these kitchen bits and then rebuild it again at some of the points. I don't know. We'll have to see how we get on. But we'll do all that next time, because, yeah, we'll finish up for now. Hopefully you are still enjoying this. I'm really enjoying this. I think this is very good. Also, I do like the fact there's a story. There's a story guiding us. I think maybe the story might be a little bit less now, now that we're kind of settled in place, because I don't imagine this place is going to burn down, and we're going to have to start again. So I guess, yeah, this is going to be our sort of fixed location. But yeah, I appreciate the fact that there is a little story introducing us to characters and lands and how it's all working and what have you. Um, if you're enjoying this, then please do leave a like. That would be most marvellous indeed. And also, if you're not already, then please do subscribe to keep up to date with how we get on here in Crossroads Inn. But for now, thank you very much for joining me in the Geek Cupboard, and I will see you next time. These people are eating the tables. They're just devouring the tables. They're so hungry. There's no atmosphere at all. Were you sat in the car park? <laughs> are you sure you came to the right place? Mein Knien stan in Brand. <laughs> if you want to order meatballs made of snails, you need to be really certain about this. 